So here we are at A&S Village and Wall Township and we're coming over here to Masudo's Pizza Place. It's a uh, market and restaurant. So we're gonna check this out. Now in the uh, restaurant section, it's really wide and nice, but they do have all of these wonderful, wonderful wines for dinner. They have a full bar and they have a very unusual antipas we got here. We got some uh, roasted peppers, some uh, cheese, artichoke hearts. Look at this. Oh, you can't smell it, but it smells really, really good. They had to spend over a million dollars in, oh, yeah? in restoring and renovating. Okay. Let, me, let me watch you eat that. Hold on. Oh my God. That cheese is really smooth. That, that's homemade. That is very good stuff. Jack, what are you doing here? All right, Brajou. That is smoked ham, but the finest quality smoked ham. What do you think? Did that melt in your mouth? Terrific. Very good. That is actually not the smoke, it's cured. Sure. Very much like prosciutto. Uh, the the thing about making good pancetta or making good anything is the product. You have to start with good ingredients. If you start with good ingredients, you'll end up with a good product. So we buy Canadian pork bellies. They're called rib bellies. Uh, the reason being that in Canada, they have larger areas to grow these pigs. They have fewer, strict, less laws, so that they can get bigger. And that gives you a bigger belly, gives you a nice fat piece of belly, which is basically four layers. You have skin, followed by yellow fat, followed by nice tender meat. And then you have something called brown fat, which is closer to the innards and then another layer of yellow fat. That's just the way it works. We, uh, we cut the ribs out, so it comes in in a whole, looks like a whole, basically the whole loin section of a pig, minus the legs and the head, that whole little saddle, they call it. We cut the ribs out, gotta butcher them out. We save those, make baby back ribs out of those. This is a fresh product, never frozen. We then uh, take a meat tenderizer, which looks like a huge fork, right? And it has a little compression thing on it, and you push and the needles puncture the skin and uh, that's to be able to penetrate the skin. We salt it then with only uh, Italian sea salt. The best sea salt comes from Trapani, Italy and Sicily. If I can't get Sicilian sea salt, I'll use uh, kosher salt. Uh, you salt them down, literally salt them down to the point where we use, for every pound of meat, we use three pounds of salt. So uh, uh, one belly, which when we cure, we cure about 30 bellies at a time. One belly is about 15 pounds. So you're looking at 45 pounds of salt for one one belly. So to do 30 of them, you can imagine, it's sacks and sacks of salt. We salt them down, we put them in a bin, and we put them at uh, 50 degrees, just above, uh, just, a, just below, too warm to, to rot, but just above 40 where it's too cold and creates moisture. We have a special case where we age our meats and keep the relative humidity at around 50%, keep it at around 50 degrees, and we let the curing process begin. It's about one day of curing for every two pounds of meat. So each each loin it takes about you know about seven days. About seven days. After that, we remove them from the salt. We wash them down with a mixture of 50-50 of vinegar and water, which the acidity slightly discolors the meat, gives it that nice pink, but also flavors it a little bit. Acid uh, wakes up the flavor on anything. The best example of that is a salad. You put salt and oil on it, it tastes good. Squeeze a little lemon or put a little vinegar, it tastes great. So the vinegar, the acid, really wakes up your tongue. After we've given it a, a wash with this, the water and the vinegar, we uh, then season it with uh, black pepper, bay leaf, lemon zest and some rosemary. We uh, let the uh, seasoning stay on the meat for about a week, still at 50 degrees with 50% relative humidity. Uh, we then remove the meat from the fridge, take all of the uh, herbs and spices off of it and hang it. We hang it in another room and we keep it around 45 degrees with 30% humidity. We want to dry the meat out. That's the uh, process of drying. So after that, that the drying process takes about 10 or 15 days, depending on the thickness of the meat. After that, it's ready to be cut, eaten, cooked.
cook cryovac to, and uh, to make videos about it. <laughs> Good. That's very, it. very the, informative. Process, How yeah. do you make these wonderful looking Napolitan? Is that it? Pizza Napolitan. Vera Pizza Napolitan. Now this so, one is the very famous one. Margarita. And which this? gets its name from the uh, famous Queen Margaret of Spain when she visited Italy. The first pizza chef, Mario Esposito, who still owns the restaurant there, called Da Michele, he made her a pizza with red, to symbolize the red and the Italian flag, white and green. And he named it after her, Margaret, Queen Margaret. That's how this name, that's how this pizza got its name, Margarita. And this one here? This one we call a zucca. Zucca in Italian is a word for a large squash. So we basically take the zucchini, slice it down and pan sear it, and then we use caramelized onions, ricotta salata, which is a form of ricotta cheese that's been seasoned and pressed, fresh mozzarella and basil, and we bake it into the pie. It's like a white pie with zucchini. Jack is getting his uh, margarita. Oh, you're not going to pick it up the traditional way? Or what is the traditional way? Do they cut it? or no, They do not cut it. They pick it up and eat it. Okay, Jack, it. what do you think? No, no, excuse me, I'm sorry. The pizza made in Italy does not cut the pie. They serve it to you whole, and they give you a steak knife and a fork. And there you go. It. The slice is a very uh, you know, American thing. But we are in America, so that counts. So, what do you think, Jack? Very good. This one, I've never had this before with the caramelized onions and the eggplant and... I gotta tell you, this, this really smells good. Oh, and the dough is all homemade here. Everything is homemade, so here comes my first bite. Oh yeah, you know, this is worth the trip to come down here to Wall to try this pizza. I've never had this before, this is pretty good. Oh yeah, and I like fried onions too. It's pretty good. I'll start by saying uh, it's got some good body to it. It's not. It's been sitting, so it's, it's floppy, but it's not. It's not killed. It's okay. It's where it should be. You happy with it? Mm -hmm. um, here's what I like. It's almost layers of flavor. You can taste the cheese separately from the tomato. The tomato still tastes like tomato. It doesn't taste like some kind of ultra super macerated paste that came out of a can. And then underneath it all, you can taste this dough, which is like a light sort of bread. I like the way it tastes. So. It is. It's very good. Special oven that you have here. Okay. Uh, quick tutorial. It's, um, it's basically a solid mass of stone on the dome. It's shaped like an igloo. If you could imagine the inside of an igloo, that's one solid mass of cord, uh, poured concrete that's mixed with some pulverized marble. The marble allows for a denser stone to, uh, to create and uh, it'll retain more heat. That's the idea there. The deck of the oven is uh, five stones that are about 18 inches, I guess that's 18 inches thick, and about nine by nine squares. And they're assembled in there in five pieces. They're just laid together. They're really not uh, glued together or cemented together in any way. They're just five solid stones, once again, to retain heat. There's no gas. There's no electric. There's no pressurized mechanism. It's basically just a little campfire inside there. Um, and that gets how hot? Well, the core of that, where it's super red orange right there, it's probably around 15 or 1600 degrees. If you really look, and I don't know if the camera will do it justice, but you can see some blue flame inside there. Blue flame is about 2,000 degrees. So if you were cooling from there, it's about 100 degrees every inch. So the top of this oven is probably around, on the inside, the top of the dome, it's probably around 1,100 degrees. The deck of the oven is probably around 750 to 800 degrees. So in the middle, probably cooks at around 850 to 900. There's no real exact temperature. It's kind of just more of a fluctuation, and that's what creates the nuance of this pizza. You really have to understand the hot spots in the oven, the heat that's, the levels of heat that come from the top down. You have to, it takes a little bit of time to sort of learn how that works. And then once you understand the, that heat, you then have to build and create a dough to fit it. And the dough is just as important. The dough uh, has no yeast in it, no traditional style yeast, which usually comes from the leftover byproducts of beer. We make something called a levain, which is a culinary term for uh, 
rye flour and white flour that's been mixed with water and allowed to sort of go sour. If this were a loaf of bread, it would be called sourdough. Um, on sourdough bread, you let it go really sour and you taste the sour. On this type of pizza dough, you, you know, you're just kind of letting it go bad for three or four days and then you're making flavor. And you can really taste it in the dough. It doesn't taste sour, but it has that sort of almost pastry-like flavor to it. you have a real brick oven, you need real wood. And here it is. Boy, I'm glad I didn't have to cut that. <laughs>